Lady Charmaine, and my guests today are award-winning producers who have a knack for developing compelling stories, new talent, fresh programming ideas for their network clients. This dynamic duo have produced shows for networks like TBS, Food Network, TV One, Cooking Channel, HDTV, Fine Living, BET, BETJ, and Disney. Their NAACP Image Award-nominated show, Save My Son with Steve Perry, has received critical acclaim. And they're here today to talk about the second season of their number one rated cooking show, Road Trip with G. Garvin, airing on the Cooking Channel on Tuesdays. I want you to help me welcome the owners of Powerhouse Productions, Rochelle Brown and Sonia Arnold. Armstead to the show. Welcome, ladies. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank you. You know, now I got to tell you this. You have a show that I absolutely loved. It was on TV One, and it was Turn It Up with G. Garvin. Now, I'll be honest with you, in my house, we would get so excited. We would say, the Homeboy Cooking Network is on. So that's what we call this show, because he had a show, literally, that was just so homegrown. It was so organic, and my husband loved the show. His male coworkers all loved the show. So you make sure you let G. Garvin know we called it the Homeboy Cooking Network, because we loved it in this household. And good to know that he's back. We're going to talk about it. And um, so first, starting off with you, Rochelle, let's talk about the brand new show, Road Trip with G. Garvin, airing on the Cooking Channel. Let's talk all about the show, how you came up with the concept of the show. And let's just talk about just food in general, since I know you guys specialize in that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Well, what's great about uh, G. Garvin is that when you get to work with a talent that is already as talented as he was, to come up with ideas and to come up with programming that really solidifies his brand or what networks are looking for is really easy. I mean, he's got a contagious personality. So for this season, we wanted to take him um, over back to the cooking channel and do what we did last season, and that was give people a taste of what life is like on the road, discovering hot new places, and what G does, what no other chef does is really goes in and looks for southern inspired dishes. Mm -hmm. Great people, great stories, great finds, but he always takes it back to his roots. And that's what makes our show so unique. It's fun. He does everything from zip lining to milking <laughs> cows and sheep to make, you know, goat cheese. You know, we nothing's off limits. He even is going to be a cowboy for a day in this season. So ladies, you better tune in to see G turn into a cowboy. But it's <laughs> fabulous um and he loves his food and loves people mm -hmm. now what was it about him uh that drew you to him to even want to produce a show for him that you love well the thing that's interesting about g is when we were at tv one uh someone actually one of the programming folks said we want to do our own cooking show you know for our audience here and just kind of do something and you described it so well homegrown organic mm -hmm. um because you know we like to cook too so one of the network execs um, knew G because G had a very, very successful and popular restaurant in California on 3rd Street right next to the Beverly Hills Mall um, called G Garden. Big celebrity clientele, you know, big business meetings. He's done very well. And they said, we want you to meet this guy. We know we want to do something with him, but you guys are kind of like the queen of doing, you know, cooking and lifestyle. And so... We met him, and after the first meeting, we knew. I mean, you meet him, you know, he, mm -hmm. is, he is the truth. Very much like Emerald. What you see with them is what you get, and we love talent like that. It's no on and off switch. So that's what really attracted us to him. He trusted us. He knew food, but we knew food TV, and we just make a perfect, perfect partner. Um, you know, Sonia really loves to cook. I really love to direct and make it go on. I'm not the big cook. She is. And G really has taught us both a lot. So that's how it all comes together. Now, I'm glad you mentioned Food TV because, Sonia, um, I want to know, why did you even decide to even start a production company? Because you were doing very well. You worked at Good Day New York and the Food Network, both of you. So what made you want to start your production company? And you left Good Day and then went to the Food Network. And I think, is it that both of you started off at the Food Network in the very beginning of their uh, network? What we, we have, both of us have uh, really great uh, lifestyle backgrounds, and we both worked in morning television for a while, and then we, you know, when we found out about the launch of the Food Network, we said, you know what, let's, let's, let's go be a part of this launch team because it's a history-making uh, opportunity. And as time went on, you know, we were in our prospective jobs. I had gone back to Fox and had moved up the ranks and under contract there, and you realize after you get to a certain um, executive level that 
there's nowhere else to go unless the general manager of the network or somebody leaves, and those jobs are pretty cushy. And so we just decided, you know, one day we were talking to amongst each other and said, you know, we're doing some unbelievable programming for these networks. We're winning awards. They're getting Emmys. They're getting nominated. And let's see if we can do it ourselves. So at the right time when both of our contracts had expired, we decided to launch our own company. We came up uh, with Powerhouse Productions after many, many nights going to our day jobs, <laughs> spending hours at night at home together just saying, you know, let's come up with a show idea. Let's get out there and figure out a way that we can take some of our concepts and, and, and bring them to life. And so Powerhouse Production was born about 10 years ago as we uh, decided that, that our ideas were good enough to, to make other networks and other executives look really good. We wanted to make ourselves look good. Mm. So we started this boutique company. Um, you know, we started out with great clients. You know, uh, Rochelle had worked with Emerald for a, a long time, and he had said, you know, network needs an outside house, so let's go to my powerhouse girls. Um, you know, we had the opportunity to create a show for TV One with Patti LaBelle, and mm -hmm. she said, you know, I think you girls are crazy for, cre uh, for quitting your full-time job, but if you're crazy enough to quit it, then take my name into that network uh, executive and see where you can go. And, you know, long story short, they gave us a great opportunity to come in and create some shows, create, you know, before you, before you even saw the Housewives uh, series in reality TV, we were doing a reality show with Patty. You know, it wasn't crazy reality, but it was sort of showing her life, how it unfolded, the concert uh, scene, getting ready, makeup, mm -hmm. fiascos, things not coming in. We, we just didn't take it to the level of some of those reality shows in terms of, um, uh, the, the, the cat fighting and all that stuff that you see there, you know, just was handled properly. But we, we just had wonderful ideas as, as two smart African-American women who decided that one day, you know what, we're not going to go any further in the current positions that we are. So we had to step out on faith, roll the dice, and, and, and it has taken us to a place that we're very proud of. You know, we've got, um, we run the gamut with lifestyle programming now from food, finance, fitness, fashion. I said we have all the F words uh, when, it comes to, um, when it comes to television, and those things fall under the lifestyle umbrella. And I think the bottom line for us is it's not about what genre or, or what type of television. If you can tell a good story, um, then you can do good TV. And, you know, we just have a supportive team. We have supportive families. And, you know, it just, again, as you and I discussed earlier, it's, uh, it's about stepping out on faith mm -hmm. and the worst thing that could ever happen, as my father said, you have to move back home. <laughs> well, if that's the worst thing that happens that, 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 that you would have to do, then I said, you know what, everybody should roll the dice, and we, we hope that we're inspirations to other young women out there, um, African-American and of, of, of other cultures, that all you have to do is have a dream. And, and if you follow it and, and, you, and, you, and you follow your heart, it will, it will come to fruition. And I love your name, Powerhouse Productions. How did you come up with the name? I, I, I think Rochelle and I were just doing that constant brainstorming where we were just sitting around, you know, every night, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we would get together and say, we have to come up with a name. And I, and I think I said, I think alliteration works. And we just started, Powerful, Power Ones. And then together we just, it, the, the great thing about Powerhouse is that everything has been a collaboration, you know. Not one person says, well, you know what, I thought of that, 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 um, title for the, for, the, for the company. It's like, we well, just, you, you know, it's just going to like, throw out ideas, throw out ideas, throw out ideas. And it's like, oh, powerhouse. And it's stuck. And, uh, you know, and we can never get rid of it. We can never alter it because we are known and, and many venues where we step in and go, the powerhouse girls are here. So <laughs> I think that's a, it pretty much says we're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. I love that. And for you, Rochelle, what type of shows do you look for to produce and how do you find your shows? Is it that people submit videos to you? Do you search on YouTube? How do you develop your shows? Well, it's interesting because now, you know, uh, five or ten years ago, you did just what a network was looking for. You might look through magazines, you know, uh, referrals, friends of friends or whatever. But now it is exactly all the things that you named. I mean, we come, we, we have very, very strategic relationships with several networks. So networks have different needs over the course of the year, and we're tapped into those needs. And sometimes we develop directly for a network. We also love to go out and find our own talent. And sometimes you find talent when you're out and about on shoot. Sometimes you meet somebody and you know automatically they have something. Um, and I always try to tell everybody, you know, even a great idea has to be developed. Mm -hmm. So when you really think about bringing it all full circle, it really comes down to a great idea and a talent or producers that can actually, you know, conceptualize and deliver that idea. So it, we, we look everywhere. You know, we are always getting our ears on the street, 
research on me every week in our offices. We have a programming meeting because we have to be one step ahead. You know, what you're seeing on TV now was already bought, you know, at least a year or two ago. So, you know, mm -hmm. you're always trying to stay ahead um, in terms of making sure that you have content. And we do also a lot of um, work for the web now, you know, and that's really a wave of the future mm -hmm. where everyone's not waiting for a green light from a network. Mm -hmm. You can now do it where you can start an online series and then, then get greenlit by a network. So it's and all facets. And Michelle, if I could uh, chime in, Lady Sherman, one of the things that we um, all, always uh, say to our staff around here is like, when you come to a meeting with a great idea, you better believe there are a thousand other people across the continent of the U.S. with that same great idea. It's who develops it, who tweaks it, who gets it into those relationships, into those hands of those uh, program executives that we have the relationships with, and who can execute it on the budget that they want to uh, execute it on, and who can really bring that idea to life. Um, so it's so funny because there are times that we see ideas and we go, oh, that was our idea. <laughs> no, it was a thousand other folks' idea. They just kind of got to the table faster. Um, but, um, and so that's why we, we, we push our folks to just really come up with ideas and, and some great ideas and different spins on them so we can definitely bring them to different networks. It may be one idea and one talent. Um, and we say, well, you know what? This town is, is African-American. We've got to make sure this town has broad appeal. So it's not just like an African-American host does this kind of show. It's like, you know what? You're a host and your cooking or your craft is excellent. You just right. happen to be. African American. You just happen to be a woman. You know, we want to always push your, what your skills and your quali uh, what you're qualified for first. I love how you said that. You just so happen to be African American because we know Oprah crossed all boundaries. She was an African American woman. She wasn't what um, with the whole European look. She didn't have the European shape, the size two. She was a regular woman that was able to relate to all type of nationalities, male and female genders. I mean, she crossed all boundaries, and she just so happened to be African American. Exactly, exactly, and, that, and that's what our hopes are. Our hopes are, and you know, we use G. Garvin as that example. You know, he's a, a fun guy. He's a cool guy. He's the guy that the women can look at on TV and say, oh my God, he's my dream guy. He's the guy that men can look at and say, you know what? He makes cooking cool. But he you does. know, at the end of the day, G. Garvin is an excellent cook. He's trained with the best. He's you know, done some magnificent things uh, in his career. And we always say he, he ended up on TV One, but now he's, par he, he's we parlayed that over to the cooking channel. So just goes to show you greatness doesn't, the greatness doesn't have a color. No, 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 knows no boundaries. And he's to me the 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 proof. It's funny you said that. I just posted um, a Napoleon Hill. Uh uh, comment on my Facebook. You know, you don't have to do great things. Just make sure you do small things great. And that is exactly. so true, dealing with greatness. Because one thing my husband does when he's in the kitchen that he got from G. Garvey when he put season on, on the food, bam! <laughs> so <laughs> we, we still got that. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I am so glad that I found out he was on the cooking network because I didn't know that. We thought he went off the air and every now and then when my husband's cooking, he'll say, what happened to our homeboy cooking network? And I'm like, I have no idea. And then when I found out he was on the cooking channel, I called my husband and told him, I said, he's on the cooking channel. He got a show. So I was so glad when they put you guys on the show. So now we know where he is. And now I want to talk to you about your production company, Rochelle. I believe that was you that mentioned something earlier about uh, your relationship with networks. How did you develop your relationships with these networks for them to trust you to produce good TV for them? Because not everybody can get their foot in the door. You know, you're knocking on doors, well, you can't and, get in. And you're right. Yep, you're right. And actually, Sonia and I are extremely, um, you, you could say lucky, but the honest truth is, is that we've worked our butt off of these relationships. I mean, you know, we're, we're not Mrs. and Mrs. Schwartz. You know, we come homegrown girls. And at the end of the day, you know, we had to really prove ourselves tenfold that we not only could deliver, and normally we over-deliver, to be honest. You know, mm -hmm. we don't get a chance to do anything over. And when we step into the room, you know, we, we, we cut the deal, we deliver the show, we pride ourselves on coming in on budget, and they know because our work speaks for ourselves. You know, we've had a number of number one shows, and that's kind of what it is in this industry. You know, your track record, and it's funny, it's like, you know, being entertainer, you're as good as your last show, you know, as good as your last single. Mm -hmm. It's a hustle never stops, you know, and it's funny because people meet us and it's like, oh, well, yeah, you know, i got this production company, I'm going to do whatever, and people have no idea the business side of it, you know. I wish I could just do programming and produce, but it's a lot to run a production company. You know, we have 
right now, you know, all of our employees, all the people that we shoot with, you got to get with the network and, you know, their deliverables. And so what we do is we pride ourselves in, you know, really being partners with our companies and different networks that we actually provide content for. You know, we make ourselves an extended brand of their family. You know, we're we're not the big guy coming in, Mr. and Mrs. Hollywood, you know, million-dollar business and stuff. Our product, you know the money is spent on the product. It looks like it on the screen. We are known for always having standout programming. So we set that bar, and you know it's great when you set a very high bar, you are always kind of exceeding, and we take great pride in that. We, we really love what we do, and we like to think that people see it when they watch our content. Well, I have to say, I see it when I watch your content because I had no idea that, um, that those shows were yours, especially Save Our Son with Steve Perry. My husband and I loved that. I loved how he took the boys to Steve Harvey's camp. I mean, just uh, how he pours into those young men and really helped those families to see a show out there because you have so many families who are crying out, help my son. You know, this would probably be the last intervention, you know, for my son. Can you help him? And then to create a show like that where people could see that there are people that care. Ladies and gentlemen, I think one of the things I think that Rochelle and I um, like to, to, to pat ourselves on the back, and I, and I say that carefully with Save My Son, is that we have to get back to the, the, the uh, mentality of that it takes a village. And we have to get back to being my brother's keeper and letting the neighbor be my brother's keeper and my children's keeper. And I think just through, you know, uh, Rochelle, and I think this was really one of her pet, her, her, her babies, this particular show and the show idea. And, uh, you know, we, we went full steam ahead because we realized day to day, you know, she and I may get up in the morning and come to the office and have quote unquote a normal life. But there's so many women out there who are just like us, who are hardworking, who are raising their families, who are trying to hold it down financially, who are giving their kids the best that they can give them. And we're finding that there's so many of those families who don't have proper role models in them and these kids are going astray. So I think that was one of the most uh, one of the shows that we were most proud of because we saw a difference being made right mm-hmm. there and mm-hmm. none of that was scripted. None of that was pre planned. And you look at these young men and it it, it breaks your heart but at the end of the day, you know there's some hope. There's definitely some hope. And you're right. You were able to see that, you know, immediately when they went to the camp, what Steve Harvey was offering those boys. You were able to see that. Even at one point, I believe, when Steve had told him, I think, cut the cameras or something, because whatever he was getting ready to mm-hmm. say, you know, everything you knew it was all real. It was very organic. This was not reality. You were shooting what was real today so it wasn't like a put on scripted reality show so I want to commend both of you on those ideas now Sonia and Rochelle if somebody is listening right now and and they say you know what I have an idea for a show and I just I just need some advice what advice would you give to up-and-coming producers or someone who wants to start their own television show looking to work with a production company what advice would they need from you to be able to start a successful company or to work with a company such as yours? Well, I'm going to start on one end, Rochelle, and I'll let you pick up. But I would just say in, in order to start a successful company, if you're going to, uh, whether you're going to decide to do it solo or do it with a business partner, you have to do it with someone that you really, really love and someone that you really, really trust. Rochelle and I have been friends, roommates for, for so many, 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 many years. And, you know, when we decided to come together, we came together with the same mission in mind. Our mission was to do good programming and to do um, – you know, and to build a company that represented who we were, and that was hardworking businesswomen. And, you know, and, and it's about crossing the T's and dotting the I's because when you work at a major network, you don't see the budget. You don't see the, the ins- what goes into the insurance riders. And so you really have to do your homework in terms of what goes into every aspect of a business, um, but making sure that you partner up and don't get yourself in any type of financial binds in terms of taking out loans and all that good sh- uh, stuff. Rochelle and I just worked on blood, sweat, tears, late nights, and supportive families, husbands, and parents, and, you know, we went from there. Uh, I'll let Rochelle tell you about the, the, the avenue of going down in terms of partnering with a production company. Okay. Yeah, if you have great ideas, you know, that's the hardest part is you have to hit it right on, ladies and gentlemen. It's like everybody just can't walk into Food Network or uh, a TV one and say, hey, I got this show, let me sell it to you. You have to be a reputable company with a track record. Mm -hmm. And so people, everybody has great ideas. You know, we are all blessed. And so it comes in different ways for different folks. 
And so when you think about it, that you have to, you know, like Fanny said, the same thing about starting a business, find yourself people that you can trust. I mean, a lot of folks will ask you to sign confidentiality agreements. You know, everybody has to protect themselves because, you know, it could be your idea, it could be an idea you got from somebody else. So everybody in this game is always like extra, extra, extra careful. But the key is, is to really hone people who do what you like or would want to do, right? It's nothing like finding a great mentor or being able to position yourself um, to at least have a meeting to discuss your ideas. So do your homework is really the trick. Find companies that feel like represent your brand or, or the types of show ideas you would like, and then from there you, you know, try to really create a relationship so that you could possibly work on programming. But even if that doesn't work out, you're, you're destined to just learn a little bit more about the business that you might have not known a couple of months before. And um, Juba Saeed, which I'm sure you know, he, one thing he had said on the show, he said, if there's a network that you want to work with, find production companies that already have relationships with those networks. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's so important because those networks trust those production companies. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I, when I sit back and think about Rochelle and I, when we first started our company, we, you know, we had our, our perspective network that we worked with, and that was Food Network, and I worked with Fox at the time. And But you, you still needed to be a proven um, production company, so you have to prove yourself. And when, when a network opens a door, you know, we had the uh, opportunity to have a mentor, as Rochelle mentioned, have a mentor. And his name was Jonathan Rogers, and he was the president of TV1 um, at the time that we were starting our company. And he opened the door for us, and he mm-hmm. gave us an opportunity and said, do you girls really think you can bring A, B, and C and do this? on this budget for us, and we were like, you know what, we are, we are, we are going to be the go-to girls. We're going to be the go-to girls that are going to not just um, give you good programming, we're going to come in uh, on budget, we're not going to go over budget, and we're going to do what we're supposed to do. All we need from you, Mr. Rogers, is to open the door. And he cracked the door open for us, and once that door is cracked, <laughs> it's up to you, whether it's your business, whether it's your uh, production company, once it's cracked, you've got to bust it open. And I think... And I, and, I, and, I, and I think Rochelle agrees with me. Once we got that door open, it was just never stop, never stop, because there was never a project too big or too small that we could do. You know, if it was a project where, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, well, you know, it's only a 10-cent profit. Well, you know what? It gave me exposure, and it gave us exposure, and it gave us connections that we wouldn't have had unless we had that. So you have to also sometimes take the, the, the bottom line figure and the dollar sign, because we do have to live, mm-hmm. have to put that on the back burner. And you have to you have to forge through. But once that door is open, I, I urge folks to kick it open. And that, and that's what I love because um, I say all the time when I'm talking to people on my show, there is a song that I like by Eminem, and when he says this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. And it does. You got to be able to just lose yourself in this moment and you have to own it and you have to never let it go. You only get one shot. Do not miss this chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And for you to get that opportunity, like you said, you got to kick that door open. And that's what you did. And if uh, people really understood when you only get one shot, what you're going to do with that one shot? If you got one last bullet in that gun, you got to make sure it lands on that target, whatever yep, you're shooting absolutely. at. So I definitely commend you on that. Can you give us real quickly some some mistakes with you coming up in the business and you see other people trying to come up in the business? What mistakes have you seen to let our audience know that are listening? Don't make these mistakes as you come up through the ranks. Um, I, I, I got some good ones for you that... um. You, you can't really, in this in this industry, because everybody knows everybody, mm-hmm. you don't want to burn bridges. You know, deals can go bad, shoots don't go well. Um, you always have to own up to it. Like, you, this industry is so, so small. One week, a girl could be your PA, and three months later, she's buying programming. So what we've learned in this industry, because it hasn't happened to us, thank God, but we've seen people in other businesses around us, is not be good to people and not treat people, you know, almost like you want to say that old wise tale the way that you want to be treated. But Mm -hmm. you have to be very careful in this business about how you treat people. That would be one thing I would say. And, Sonia, I'll let you finish. Um, I I always say, you know, I would say a wise man, but that wise man is my father, uh, who's uh, 82 years old. And I'll never Mm -hmm. forget one day I came home from work, almost uh, my stomach and my feet. And he was asking me, what's wrong? It looked like you were crying. I'm like, no, I'm not crying. I'm just sick to my stomach. Um, you know, and as Rochelle mentioned, like your intern or the person that's your production assistant can be your equal or can be at another network buying programming in a matter of two years. And you're like, hey, I, I've got more experience than this person. And that happened to me. And I came home sick and 
I went upstairs and I sulked and I thought, you know, well, you know, my father coming up in a time where, you know, African Americans didn't get a fair shake all the time. Mm-hmm. I went to sulking, thinking, you know, he's going to be on my side. And he said, "Listen." He called me and said, "You can sit up here and sulk all you want. You need to sit down and think about what you're going to do next mm-hmm. that's going to propel you to the next level. Because sulking and crying does nothing for you. And that girl still has her job. <laughs> that girl still moves ahead. And it was never that girl's fault. And 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 to this day, she's still my friend. But I was like, oh my goodness. So and my father would always say, "Don't worry about her." Worry about your darn self, you know? So worry about yourself and stop worrying about what's happening for other people. So when you get yourself so consumed of, I didn't get this and this is not fair, you know what? Life is not fair. Grab yourself up by the bootstraps and keep on keeping on. I absolutely love, I love your dad. That is some wise wisdom. She still has her job and you're sitting there crying. And now look where you are. God has blessed you to work with all these different networks, put shows on these different networks. God has blessed you to have just an awesome resume. Of course, it did not come without any work, but look what you have done and also what you do. I see you work with the Girl Scout, Sonia. Praise God. <laughs> So, you know, you both have children and you are both just doing it. And God has truly made both of you powerhouses. And I definitely see more great things coming for the both of you. And that he's going to use you to open up many doors for so many more people. Well, we, we, we do feel honored. We, we feel blessed. And we thank you so much for this opportunity. And, and for all those people who support us out there, we thank them as well. Oh, you are so yes. welcome. And go ahead, Rochelle. And I was going to say, we think, you know, it's quite amazing as we were you know, looking at your stuff, it's great to see, and isn't it wonderful that black women can come together to support each other? You know, we can have a voice on your show. You never know what this may lead for you, with us, but it's nice when we all can sit down and agree to just support each other, and we commend you. I mean, all of the folks that you have interviewed, I mean, incredible. So kudos to you, too, and we're very happy for your happiness, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just love opening up doors for other people, but, you know, God does it for me, but he knows I don't trip off of that because if it had not been for the Lord, I cannot open a door for myself. It's God that opens the doors. So I give him all the credit. So I want to thank you so much. And I want to remind everybody that you definitely check out Road Trip with G. Garvin airing on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. on the Cooking Channel. And as I call him, the Homeboy Cooking Network, you will definitely love him. And I love his healthy Soul food. Y'all got to check them out on the Cooking Channel on Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Thank you so much, the ladies, for joining me on the show. Thank you. Thank you.